Hey everyone, my name is Philip from Scan Unlimited and I'm one of the co-founders and developers here at Scan Unlimited. And this is our weekly live stream. Uh, I'm calling it Sourcing Saturdays, where we go over not just sourcing, but just all aspects of being an Amazon seller. And uh, today's or this week's topic is going to be in regards to analyzing Keepa charts kind of understanding all the different aspects of Keepa. And we're also going to uh, discuss different buy box strategies, which um, uh, kind of compared to, um, one second, someone's saying there's a lot of static with the mic, maybe. Let me know if that's better. I'm gonna try and turn the gain down a bit. Um, Kind of uh, in contrast to other people that you might see on the internet talking about Amazon selling, um, I have a little bit more of a nerdy approach to things, um, very analytical. So maybe this is kind of a, a good blend uh, of content that you consume. And uh, great, so we got thumbs up that it's much better, great. Um, so yeah, I'm just saying that uh, as opposed to simply um, looking at content that just talks about how great selling on Amazon is. Uh, I like to talk about more of like the, the details and the more technical aspects of selling on Amazon. So hopefully you guys get some value from this. Um, I do see someone asked um, if this live stream will be um, saved for later. If you miss the live stream, yes, all of our live streams will be saved within the group. Um, and also on our, uh, I believe it's on our Facebook page. So the Scan Unlimited Facebook page. So that's that. Um, so let's get started. Um, so I, uh, let's actually switch over to the screen. So right now this view is the product detail page within Scan Unlimited. So this is the, um, the page with like it's the feature in Scan Unlimited that lets you kind of dive deep into in a specific ASIN, and you'll see that uh, we actually integrate with Keepa to bring in the Keepa charts into the app. So um, for most situations, uh, you're going to be able to do most of your analysis on like with the Keepa charts right here in Scan Unlimited. But since this is a kind of in-depth uh, deep dive into the Keepa charts. I'm actually going to be using their Chrome extension. Um, so which we'll be using, well, we'll have to open within an Amazon detail page. So to open up a detail page from the product detail, you just click the, the title and that'll open the product up in Amazon. And um, as long as you have the extension, they'll insert uh, a chart under the, um, I guess these are the uh, key features. So the basics of Keepa is really, there's two different metrics we're really looking at. There's sales rank and then there's pricing. And I say pricing instead of just price because there's different types of prices. You have um, what the uh, let us take, uh, for example, Amazon, what are they selling at? What is the new marketplace price? So what are like FBA sellers selling at? What's the buy box price? Um, if there's any lightning deal pricing. So these are all different prices that can occur over a period of time. And uh, Keepa stores that data and kind of gives you a time series for you to be able to look at historical data. Um, now, I should kind of preface by saying that um, looking at historical data is never um, a way to 100% predict the future. It's 100. It's not possible. Um, otherwise, everybody would probably be winning quite a bit in the stock market. Um, but that's just not the reality. But uh, the Amazon marketplace is pretty inefficient, so you'll see some opportunities show up because um, there are some patterns that will repeat. So not guaranteed, but it can. All right, so let's kind of uh, go into the chart. So 
actually, I think there's a way for me to collapse the bottom one. Uh, maybe this. Yeah, there we go. You should keep a fix that. Come on. Um, anyway, so let's, I just want to focus on the top chart for now. So the green line is your sales rank number. I actually have it flipped to have sales rank, like as sales rank gets lower. Uh, so as it approach rank one, uh, the line will go to the top of the graph. You can switch that by just clicking this, uh, one through nine down arrow and it'll just flip it so that it goes uh, the other way. I kind of like it the other way just simply because it kind of reminds me of like a stock chart. Uh, typically up is good when you're the, the person trying to buy low, sell high. So I kind of like to see the price, kind of the a look at the price and the sales rank going in the same direction. So that's why I have it uh, inverted. You can do as you like. Um, so basically the, the green line, as, as, so in this example, let's just look at this item. Um, you'll see that the green line in about at, like the August time period was, um, much worse than it is today. Um, I mean, significantly worse than we're at, it was, it got down to 86,000 at one point and now it's at about, oh, about the 1000 range, it kind of uh, fluctuates a bit. And like we can gain insights into this product by kind of interpreting why something has happened in the past to be able to predict a pattern in the future. So I think I got to refresh this because Kiva is covering some of the options. There we go. So right now it is set to three, a three month period. I'm gonna extend it to say all. And what all is, it says 116 days. That's simply when Kiva started tracking this item. Typically, that's pretty close to the whole life of this ASIN. So the second um, someone views this product um, with the Chrome extension, Kiva will start tracking the item. So uh, we can kind of um, like see, okay, well, it started its life right here at about July 30th. And keep it didn't have any sales rank data just yet, but we do see that uh, Amazon was there. We'll jump into price in a bit. I, I'm gonna focus really on sales rank at the moment. But um, it took about, I don't know, almost a month for Keepa to start keeping track of sales rank. And you'll see that that you'll have these like staircase type shapes um, where, and typically when looking at a keep a chart, these, sell, these um, staircase type shapes is kind of a sign to say that keep is not getting much information from it or um, most likely in this situation, there is just not much activity um, with the sales rank. So Amazon themselves is not actually changing sales rank. And that's because probably there wasn't much sales when the item was first um, published on Amazon. But slowly but surely, in about, about September time period, the staircase shape uh, started to turn into a kind of a fast um, squiggle, I guess is the only term I can think of right now. But um, this uh, fast squiggle is a sign of more activity going on on the listing. So typically when you're on the sourcing side of, of the Amazon game, uh, you're looking at saying, okay, well, I, that's a good sign to say that this item might have been slow before, but now it's turning into a much more active listing. Um, and then I guess about uh, a month later, it starts to stabilize at around between 10,000 and 20,000 rank. And up to November, it starts to really start to get pinned towards the like less than 5,000 sales rank uh, point. And w w you guys, I'm sure can guess based on the type of item I'm looking at, which is a toy, why is it get starting to get pinned towards the top during this time period? Well, 
most likely it's because uh, Q4. Like this is a good Christmas item and there is going to be a pattern with uh, the holidays and the shopping season and sales rank for an item that is perfectly suited for that season. Um, so, and later on in the live stream, maybe we can talk about seasonality a bit. Um, so th th that's kind of like how you would kind of look at sales rank. And there's a lot more that we can go to like essentially uh, figure out where a product will go in the future. But I just kind of want to start with the basics of what this line is saying and um, why it might be moving in a certain direction. Um, so before we go into more of uh, sales rank stuff, let's kind of go over the other data points on a Keepa chart. Um, the orange shaded area is there to represent Amazon is currently um, on the listing. And you'll even see the price um, that they're selling at, in this case at $14.99. And um, for the life of this product, it looked like they first um, published this listing and they were on it. And then either the listing was unpublished or Keepa just wasn't interested in tracking it and didn't get any data. But really, I'd say that Amazon for the life of this listing has been here. Um, and that is something that you can take into your own analysis to say, well, if I have a, a strict sourcing policy where I don't like to buy things that Amazon is on, this would probably be something you rule out immediately. Um, but sometimes it's actually not a bad idea to, to consider an item that has Amazon on there because Amazon may not always be on there. And that goes into seasonality. I hope I can find some ASINs where it shows um, where you can time it, where Amazon, you kind of can expect Amazon not to be there. Um, cross your fingers, maybe we find something. Um, and then, yeah, and so you'll see the fluctuation in Amazon's pricing. So it went down to, uh, they went down about a dollar in September and then went up again. So, and I see actually the, we should talk about the blue line now right at the top and the blue line is supposed to represent the new price for third-party sellers um, so in this case uh, you can see someone is selling for $14.99 let, let me go into the offers page to make sure um, this is Amazon warehouse Amazon warehouse so right here yeah $14.99 is what someone's selling for granted they have shipping so I I gotta say, like some of the the, the third-party seller pricing on Akipa is a little, eh, I don't know. It, it can be a little misleading. It's not wrong. It's, it is fourteen ninety-nine, but in this case, um, it's uh, got shipping as well. But either way, um, the buy box price, which are these um, pink diamond shapes, um, will also say like, okay, well, regardless of whatever the third party seller is. If the buy box right now is at $14.99 by Amazon, that's really the number you should be focusing on. And um, yeah, so if I was analyzing this, I would really be focusing on Amazon's price because everyone will just need to follow um, Amazon because otherwise if you don't, if you set it like uh, way higher, you're never gonna get the buy box. Um, it looked like at some point, um, some third party sellers were trying to undercut Amazon, but it still didn't take the buy box from them. You can see that Amazon kept the buy box because of the um, pink diamond at $14.99 saying it was it was Amazon, even though a third price seller was at $11.99. So that's another thing I guess to take from this, which is um, that uh, Amazon's sometimes more um, generous with sharing the buy box on certain listings as long as you're meeting like a certain price criteria. And sometimes they're not. Uh, in this case, it looks like they're a little tough to deal with, um, but not impossible. There's also a chance that this 1199 was actually not even an FBA offer, which is another uh, issue. Um, so I think I got all the pricing items. So we talked about the Amazon price, we talked about the new price, talked about Buy Box. The only different thing uh, difference here is 
these lightning deals, which are the red circles. And most likely that was Amazon. Um, although it looks like Amazon. Yeah, I mean, I, I would highly, I highly doubt that it wasn't Amazon. So um, they discounted it to 1274 on November 14th and 13th. Um, and so that's basically the pricing that I look at to kind of try and understand the history of an item so that I can kind of predict what will happen next. Um, so let's start to talk about how pricing and sales rank kind of go together because it really, there's a strong correlation between the two. So for example, um, there's a lot of things you can kind of speculate what happened, but I mentioned that as the holidays drew closer, um, there was going to just naturally be an increase in sales rank on a, a toy item that's widely known. Um, Melissa and Doug is a pretty popular toy brand. And so uh, naturally, as it gets closer to Christmas, it'll get more popular, hence the sales rank. But there's something else to also consider. Maybe and I've seen this happen a few times, maybe this drop by a dollar um, might have been a kind of a, um, a catalyst for the item to start to gain popularity. And so maybe that's why in September you see the, the sales rank line start to creep up towards zero or one, I should say. Um, they went back up to $14.99 but at that point, it's a it maybe because of the traction already, like the item has already gained traction. The market is not sensitive enough to a one per, uh, one dollar uh, increase in the price, so the sales rank kind of stays steady. And then what do we see again? We see a, a much bigger sell, uh, like a much bigger decrease in the price by Amazon. Um, during that time period where the rank really started to get pinned towards closer to one. And then on top of that, they even did a lightning deal. And actually, I'm glad that we wrote up the lightning deal because if I zoom in, which if you, you can zoom in by just like highlighting a part of the chart, this is like a perfect explanation. This is a perfect proof for what I'm trying to say, actually. So when this lightning deal hit, because of that low price and the increased promotion of the item, you literally can see the effect on sales rank. So instead of just thinking of items based on seasonality in terms of how popular they'll move, there's also pricing. Pricing actually will move sales rank up or down. Um, so uh, that's something you should take into consideration as well when trying to identify what will happen in the future. For example, let's say you had an exclusive with a vendor, right? And you're the only one with that ASIN. Um, you're, you'd be very um, upset to find out if you had this idea in your head that I can price it at any price and uh, to make an unlimited margin and uh, people will keep buying it. And like that's obviously not true um so sales rank is sensitive to price whatever if the price goes up sales rank will normally get worse not down but you know it'll get uh to a higher number or a worse sales rank if the price goes down then you'll see the uh, sales rank improve so that's just a natural supply and demand market force that um you know, Amazon, the whole Amazon game is not uh, uh, immune to that. So hopefully that's um, making sense. By the way, if anybody has any questions, um, please feel free to add them into the chat. Uh, every once in a while, I'm taking a peek um, to see if anybody has questions. So let's go back to Scan Unlimited because I actually had a cost for this item. Um, the cost was $749 and the ROI was $24.57 and the profit was $1.84. So right now, even while looking at this chart, technically at $14.99, I am still going to be profitable with the item. And so I can look and I can also 
kind of guess that um, sales rank will probably continue to stay up all the way through probably into January even. Um, so we're talking high numbers. Um, and also, by the way, if you're not over, like, if you're not very familiar with the, the, I guess the conversion of sales rank to estimated sales per month. Um, usually in my videos, I refer people to the sales estimator on Jungle Scouts website. It's a free tool. Um, I always suggest the free tools because the paid tools to me are just, um, if that's the only thing you're using it for estimating sales, um, they're not very accurate in the first place. But um, if you don't know like at all how many sales something should sell, like how many items something should sell, um, then yeah, it's better than nothing, I guess, to go with the, fr it's, it's free, so it can't hurt. So it's like, a, I guess, a, at least one point of reference. Um, so yeah, you would, cons in this situation, if I'm sourcing this item at the 749, and I have a shipping cost of 13 cents, let's just say, per item to ship into Amazon, and ROI is 25%, and I see that it's going to be consistent up until probably uh, January time period. The reason, by the way, I'm saying that is because uh, I did say that price is part of it, but I really, just from my own experience of reading charts, um, I know that this item is really getting a boost because of the holiday season. So I know that I can expect a certain amount of sales per month up until January. So I would want to calculate how many sales that would be. And then um, usually what I suggest to people is to buy no more than 10% of that number if you plan to be directly competing with Amazon. And, um, and we'll go over some other situations where you might want to buy more. But I, like I said, I need to find an ace and that would be a good example. Hopefully I find something. Um, and then going after um, January, I would want to maybe consider um, revisiting the chart and looking at sales rank and seeing the pricing to see how much I would want to buy because obviously if the sales rank is getting pinned to the top because of the holidays, then um, you can't expect that going into cube one, for example. So you would probably want to buy less at that point. Let's see if I can, uh, let's look at a different item. Actually, before I do that, I did put some notes here. I guess I should probably go over the basics of Kipo before I keep going into the more advanced stuff. Uh, sorry, it's, uh, it's a habit. Um, so I wanted to go over the data tab. So the data tab is pretty interesting. Um, they have a lot of little, um, I mean, most of these things I find to be pretty useless, um, but some things that I find useful is you can kind of pull the UPC out of uh, an ASIN. Sometimes you'll see that there's multiple UPCs attached to an ASIN. Um, Ta-da, I told you people on Scan Unlimited that that's the case. A lot of people don't understand why when you scan something, like a scan a UPC and Scan Unlimited, and you get like multiple ASINs back and some of them are not even relevant. The reason is because there can be multiple ASINs attached to one, a uh, sorry, multiple UPCs attached to one ASIN. So just, it's going to happen, right? Um, not sure why Amazon was built in a way that that happens, but that's just the way they decided to go. Um, but yeah, you get things like manufacturer part number, um, which in this case, I did have that information. Let me go back to the scan. Mm. Yeah, see right here, 31715. It's the same number here. It's because um, in the upload I did for this scan, I had the catalog from the manufacturer. So I, I was able to uh, uh, yeah, have it in my scan. So it makes it a lot easier for purchasing. So making POs and stuff like that. Uh, let's see if there's anything else that I use in the data tab. Um, not really. Um, I also don't like using this. Uh, I will say I don't like using the FBA fees here because um, this seems to be more of an estimate than an actual request to Amazon's API to check the fees. Maybe someone in the, the comments can say I'm wrong. But uh, I've seen it for myself where it's not, uh, 
uh, exact, but it's a good, if let's say for example, there's no product dimensions at, on Amazon servers, then Amazon, even if you made a request to the API, they would never give you the FBA fee. So it's a good estimate in a way, I guess, uh, or it's a good start. It's better than nothing. It's better than assuming that there is no FBA fee because there definitely is going to be one. Just once the item arrives at the FBA center, they'll just measure it right there and then, and then add the, then it'll put the fee into the system. So yeah, um, definitely worth checking out the data tab. And then let's see, oh yes, the other thing I, I use occasionally, it's super rare, but let's give you a scenario where, for example, let's say I, let's say I bought this item, I don't know, in this August time period, like I made a purchase to Melissa and Doug and they shipped me the product and it got to my warehouse and uh, so it was during this time period where I was like, well, yeah, Amazon's not on the listing and the price was pretty decent. And I knew because of my experience that this Melissa and Doug item would do very well for Christmas, which I, it obviously has. And like a lot of Melissa, like, cause just cause I've bought it, bought their products before in the past. Um, by the way, a little disclosure, Melissa and Doug is not like overly thrilled with FBA sellers. So, um, but I use them as an example cause I used to sell their products. But um, yeah, like, let's say I uh, assumed that I was going to buy it during that early August period. And then, I, and then let's say the shipment came in, I don't know, maybe September 1st, right? And then I go to list the item and then I see, damn, Amazon is back on the listing and that, and like, let's say for example, um, even though $14.99 according to the profit calculator, right, in Scan Unlimited is positive. Let's just pretend that fourteen ninety nine is actually a negative ROI. Well, in that case, then I have to start to make a decision. Like it's sitting in my warehouse, I can store it in my warehouse. I could maybe just return it back to Melissa and Doug because at that maybe I'm just like going to forfeit and say there's no way that I can do this. Maybe because I when I project out to the future. I might see that it doesn't look like I'm going to have a window of opportunity. Uh, or you could like actually send it in and uh, try and compete because you believe that the price will fluctuate uh, upwards. Again, that, that's kind of a what if scenario because right now it's technically pro profitable. But um, in the situation where I might store it in my warehouse and then plan to ship it um, soon, what I'll do is I'll use their track product feature and I will set, let's say in this case, I, I really am looking at Amazon and let's say I set a, uh, basically this is an alert that says, I want to see, I want to keep to send me an email when Amazon goes over 1599 or more. So you have to click this to change, um, if you want to see if it goes down or above. Um, I remember, I think it, at one point Keepa, the whole point of this Keepa was trying to do was give uh, buyers on Amazon. Like if you were trying to buy something on Amazon, like a TV, you could set like a way to say, oh, when it goes on sale, send me an email. But uh, they added the more probably because sellers were asking for it. Um, and then you can say the amount of time you want to track for. So let's say, maybe over the next three months, let me know if Amazon goes over this price and um, send me an email. Um, it can be useful. I don't use it too much because ideally when you do your product research um, within Scan Unlimited, you buy something that's currently profitable, but also like uh, within Scan Unlimited, you have the charts in there. You can obviously come into the detail page and open up the charts to see what's the historical um, changes and what should you pr predict for the future and what what can you expect and uh, ideally you would want to be right most of the time I, I guess that's the way to put it um, I'm not but of course like things happen right you don't always get it right and uh, you just need to be able to figure out what to do next um, which is kind of 
I guess a pretty good transition into the buy box um, topic that I wanted to go over, like buy box strategies. But um, let me see if I can bring up another Keepa chart and maybe we can get like a different chart so that I can maybe give another scenario. This looks like a pretty popular item. <clears throat> see here okay yes very popular um, rank 738 so let's open this up in Amazon get the chart open let's see what this looks like so I like to zoom out so let's go to a year and uh, yeah actually this is a really good example um, this is the example that I actually wanted. I swear I did not plan this out. <laughs> so we got lucky. <clears throat> so basically in this scenario, you can see like the previous item, we only saw like maybe 100 days. So we couldn't see a full year cycle to see some seasonality. But this item has over 800 days of data. So this actually has um, the seasonality seasonality of the item included and so if I go back to the very beginning of this chart grant remember I have the range set to a year um, I can see late November which it is right now um, but it's of 2018 and uh, let me zoom in here so this is last holiday what happened well it looks like the rank well, actually let me zoom out even more let me go to this right here. So this is basically late 2018. And you can see that like the previous item, the item had a sales rank of about, you know, 100,000 or so. Uh, Amazon was selling the item at a steady price. And as it creeped towards its way towards some um, Q4, it started getting more, more popular because even though, I mean, I guess this is not exactly a toy, but I bet you it is in the toys and games category because it's still a gift kind of item. And then, you know, Amazon, there's Amazon again, probably putting sales on during Q4 to try and attract um, buyers um, from, let's say, Walmart or other alternatives. And November comes around and they really uh, start to market this thing, keeping the price pretty low. But then you start to see, you see these white gaps. This is where Amazon is having a hard time um, with keeping the product in stock. So um, do you remember earlier in the live stream I was saying about how Amazon is kind of an inefficient market? This is exactly what I'm talking about because even though Amazon has basically unlimited capital, um, they can't control like the supply of their vendors, right? Mills and Doug has their own constraints and they have to do their own inventory management and planning. And sometimes it's not um, perfect because of course, Mills and Doug doesn't want to have like a million items um, after the holidays, right? So they want to plan for just having a little extra maybe, um, but sometimes it oversells. So Amazon was clearly having some time are having a hard time keeping the product in stock. And what do you see with the blue lines? Remember blue lines are third party sellers. And what do you see with the, um, the buy box price? It starts to go towards the top. Like it's really, I mean, it looks like the price even pretty much doubled <laughs> um, dur during, let's say late November, early December. So really, Amazon um, did not have enough stock for the Christmas time period because they were already having problems during November. So it didn't even hit December yet. And the, um, so a lot of people might have, let's say sourced, I'm saying third party sellers. So they might have sourced this product in September and they were probably, let's say at $29, Amazon selling it, they were like, oh great, I'm never gonna get the buy box. I'm gonna lose my money and I'm gonna sell at maybe what these guys over here were doing, 22.56, they're gonna sell there and try and liquidate their inventory. But 
the people that held on after, uh, into late November really was able to uh, capitalize on the constraint in supply. And uh, basically, this continued on far even after Christmas. Like uh, uh, Amazon got more in stock probably from returns from Christmas, but that's not sufficient enough um, to keep it in stock. So it even started going out of stock in January. And mind you, sales rank in January, still pretty decent. So um, little, I guess, bonus tip for the Q4 season is Q1 might be your favorite quarter, just saying. Oh, yikes. Sorry about that. Hit my filter. Stay. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so like sometimes an item that seems very common to sell in Q4 might actually be a good Q1 item, a January item. In this case, it was actually both a, a good Q4 item and it was a good January item. And I think, yeah, going back to a year range, basically once Amazon got back in stock, it just, they took control over it again. Let's zoom back into 2018. Um, something I wanna bring up, kind of referencing the first item we were looking at, is notice that we are, let's say right here, this is at December 2nd, the rank is a thousand rank at this point. Amazon's sold out and third-party sellers are freaking like celebrating, like yay, I'm making so much money, but the what's going on with the sales rank, right? It is plummeting um, pretty quickly. And the reason for this is, remember I said that seasonality played a part in um, why, let me kind of zoom out a little bit during 2018, uh, seasonality had a part to play in getting the sales rank item or sales rank to get to this high of a level during the holidays. But um, price still is a factor. Price is extremely important to consider. And what happened, price was getting very high. So it was starting to go down, down, down. And look at this perfect example of how sensitive people are to price. Um, it got the sales rank got down to a low of 9,700. When I say low, by the way, I'm talking about like worse. So it's not uh, it's not a positive thing for sellers. So it got down to 9,700, and then it jumped up back up to like almost 2,000. Yeah, a little over 2,000 rank. Why is that? Because look what happened to the price. Amazon for a few days between December 3rd and December 6th had it in stock. So they were able to basically get the price back down and everybody, all the buyers, all the Amazon consumers uh, started to buy faster and more frequently, uh, which boosts the rank up. And that's a perfect example of how the, the pricing is, is going to play a huge part in the sales rank. So it's not just like, oh, it's uh, Christmas time, so it's a toy item. It will be good during this time period. It's not a static number. It's going to fluctuate all over the place based on um, many factors, including seasonality and price. And then it repeated the pattern. Sales rank started to worsen again. Why? Because Amazon wasn't there and then the third party sellers were basically price gouging this, this item, um, which is fine. I mean, it's just, it's just the free market doing its thing. But then Amazon gets it back and pushes the price right back down, pushing the sales rank back up, right? Amazon goes out of stock again and the, the sales rank really starts to plummet because basically from December 10th to December 27th, Amazon is not in stock and it looks like even a lot of sellers started to lose out uh, like because it just everyone started to lose um, their all their inventory or not lose, but they were selling through all of their inventory. <clears throat> and if it ever gets to a point where a listing just has no uh, offers. Um, sales rank does not just stop at that point. It still continues to change. In this case, it will just keep dropping. So um, items that are that go out of stock actually does negatively impact the, um, the sales rank, even in the long term. So sometimes 
if something has been out of stock for a long time, it'll take a really long time maybe to kind of recover from that. But that wasn't the case here. It was only maybe a few weeks, uh, maybe not even like a week or two. Um, and then Amazon came back in stock and brought it back up. Notice that when Amazon came back into in stock, um, the sales rank didn't spike back up to its original sales rank. Why is that? Because Christmas is over at this point. It's December 30th. Maybe people are using their gift cards and maybe this is an item that is just normally pretty popular because people like it. But it's never going to be the same as during Christmas time. So that right there, I'd say is worth uh, quite a bit of value. Um, so you can, uh, I mean, I don't know, that took me maybe four years, five years of selling on Amazon to really understand. So you're welcome. Um, yeah, let's see. And then let's look at this year. So I think we see a similar pattern. I think so. So let's go from end of August to today. Amazon back on the listing, I think at the same price as before. Yeah, from last year, basically the same price. They're a little bit higher from last year. And the, the sales rank, it's doing a similar pattern as last year. It is starting to climb, making its way up to the top, uh, getting ready for Q4. So let's see. They decide to drop down to $27. And then, well, yeah, basically the sales rank just keeps climbing because it's essentially... Uh, being a catalyst to the popularity of the item. And let's see, and they're getting closer to Christmas and then we get this spike. Again, back to the whole seasonality aspect of um, like the sales rank. It's going up because of seasonality, but pricing is playing a part. So this spike right here, what do you guys think is the reason? It's obvious that it's because Amazon went from $27 all the way down to 19 um, and it looks like actually it looks like an, uh, a third-party seller was the one that really aggravated that which is kind of funny so that was a real troll of a seller um, <laughs> so sometimes if a third-party seller drops their price like significantly even Amazon well like I guess their algorithm will have to budge on that um, pricing being so low. They want to keep the buy box, but um, they don't just like, no matter what, never share the buy box. If you are like significantly a lower price, you will take the buy box from them. But in this case, they didn't want that to happen and they just matched them. And uh, yeah, the sales rank skyrocketed to 34 in toys and games. Super popular, by the way, we're talking thousands and thousands per month and then let's see uh yeah so basically the price goes right back up and you see again sales rank is dropping but because we're in that time period where um basically there's you know it's q4 so it's never going to drop back down to uh the september time period until january february that's when you'll start to, you'll see that, uh, that drop back down. And then, uh, so then you have the question of like, okay, what will happen next? So let's see. From, from everything we talked about, I would say that for one, there's a really good chance that this item is going to repeat what happened last year and probably Amazon's not going to be able to keep it in stock. Let, uh, and as I mentioned before, it's not necessarily because Amazon can't. They have basically unlimited capital. They can buy as many as they like, but uh, the supplier, in this case, Melissa and Doug, may not want to have all that excess supply. So they they might not have enough. Granted, the, the supplier might have learned from last year to keep enough in stock. So 
yeah, it's a little bit uh, rough. One good thing, I'd say if you were a seller in this situation, is that because of this person being a troll for a few days, actually it was only two days, um, that really increased the rank significantly as opposed to last year. So again, thinking about Melissa and Doug and Amazon, if they're projecting their sales based on last year, um, they're going to be out of stock because just that two days right there probably blew through at least a thousand units in a day or two. Um, so, um, cause let's see, uh, yeah, so it was a, a lower than a thousand rank before Christmas during that time period. Um, and that's where we're at right now, but I'd say the rank is doing better than last year. So, there is definitely a really good chance that history will repeat itself. I don't know if it'll be as early as December 3rd or actually I think it was down to, or it got, it was like late November, right? Um, and so, yeah, I, I'd say it would probably repeat itself. Since we have 887 days of data, we can actually look at the, the year before. Wow. Look at this. So, same thing happened in 2017. Uh, early November, ran out of stock. Third party sellers, freaking killing it. Doubling the price, <laughs> literally like $70 for something that's selling for 27. Uh, they were really killing it. And you might also be thinking, well, if sales rank were to worsen uh, because of the price, because like I said, that's one of the factors, then how are they selling through? The thing is, like when rank gets to this kind of level of popularity, there's just no stopping that train. Like people are going to buy it at ridiculous pricing. Like they don't care. They want it. Uh, it's a super popular and there's just people want it. Um, by the way, there's a whole economic theory to that, but I'm going to nerd out by myself, I guess. I'm not going to bore you guys, but uh, it talks about the elasticity. So how much do people want something even when the price goes up? I mean, the reason why the price is going up is supply is running low. So really the only people that should be getting it are people that really, really want it. And so these sellers that are selling for $70 uh, during that time period, they were selling not as, not as much or as fast as Amazon was selling beforehand when they were selling at like 29, but those sellers were selling uh, at $70 and the same thing happened last year and I don't know uh, You guys can take down this ASIN and check after Christmas uh, You guys can tell me if I'm wrong <laughs> That's fine, but uh, I have a feeling that there's a really good chance it's going to be the same thing happening again Um, Let's see I've been talking for a really long time. I feel like Where's the, the comments? Wow, I'm really surprised by the amount of people. Um, that's uh, very surprising. Well, thank you everyone for joining. Um, if you guys have any questions, just let me know. So yeah, um, I think because the, the Keepa section of this has kind of taken a lot longer than usual, um, we'll just uh, do the next live stream to be talking about like buy box strategies. So buy box strategies, what I mean by that is kind of what I, what I was talking about in regards to when I receive items and I might have to think, Oh, should I keep it in my warehouse? Should I ship it to FBA right now? Maybe because the pricing is not great, or maybe I should because the pricing is good. So I should send it right now. Um, or even, even consider merchant fulfilling some stuff. I do that as well because maybe the pricing is good right now. Um, and I need to take advantage of it. So I might send half to FBA, keep the other half at the uh, at my warehouse because then it's available for sale right away, even while the item is traveling um, to the fulfillment centers. So um, we'll talk about that um, in the next live stream, uh, which will be next week, uh, Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern. And um, yeah, and I'll, there's a whole bunch of things we can talk about at that point. And of course, if you guys have any questions about 
um, the Keepa stuff that we covered today, uh, please leave it in the comments. I'll, I'll try and get in there and answer any questions, even if you're watching this later on. So um, thanks again for watching. Uh, remember, uh, again, next live stream Saturday, 2 p.m. Eastern, Sourcing Saturdays. Thanks, guys. See you later.